Hey there, Bruce, and welcome back to the Game of Fortune. We are back on the hike once again, although we are very close to the end. We got the last tent to get to, and we already know how this is going to play out. Uh, except this time, Maria's not going to make it. Anyway, we got a mountain to climb. Let's do that. This is all your fault, Maria. I hope you know that. Okay, when I said that there'd be a mountain to climb over, I didn't think we'd actually have to deal with a mountain. What were the odds that a mountain would actually show up? A mountain? You have to hike up a goddamn mountain? Sorry. Well, no point fretting about it now. Let's get going. Are you going to be able to climb up with your arm injured? Well, the path is probably not going to involve actual rock climbing. At least I really hope it doesn't. If it gets really bad, I'll just back down. I'll be safe. The mountain path was gravelly and the uneven ground made walking difficult enough, injury or not. The further up we travelled, the colder it got and the windier it became. Eventually, snow began to fall, and it was like we were in the snowy area from before. Kishi, Devon, you two holding up? I'm managing as good as anyone can in shorts and a tank top on a mountain. Yeah, it's cold, but it's manageable. That's good, that's good. I don't think we've got too much further to go to get to the top. But I'm worried about what Belle's got in store for us. Like, is she going to summon an avalanche or a mountain lion or cause an earthquake? Let's hope she goes easy on us and lets us... Let's the pain of hiking up the mountain be our only challenge. Of course, it was a low rumble at first, but soon it was hard to keep balance as the entire mountain seemed to be shaking. Me and my big fucking mouth. Try to get low. The last thing you want to do is roll off the mountain. We all crouched down and were able to stabilize ourselves to keep from falling off. Of course, that didn't help much when we were still in danger from getting crushed by the ensuing rock slope. We have to get moving. You don't have to tell me twice. The tumbling stone and debris from the top of the mountain began to pelt us along with the ground. We kept our eyes up and open to avoid the bigger stones and the occasional boulder from flattening us to pancakes. We ran as fast as we were able, trying to outpace the falling rubble and make it to whatever checkpoint that we could find. Eventually we had we had rushed our way over toward the rickety looking bridge on the mountain. Oh, for fuck's sake, of course there's some perilous looking bridge. Well, we don't have time to waste gawking at it. As if the mountain was agreeing with there were another violent shakes and another wave of debris, rock and snow tumbling down near us. Let's just go. Alright, I'll go first. Maria quickly sprinted across the bridge and it seemed to hold up well enough as she turned back to us and waved for us to follow. I'll go next. It was, a safe, it was safe enough to cross, so I rushed on ahead. Just as I made it halfway across the bridge, another tremor shook the bridge and it wobbled dangerously. I was gripping the edges of the bridge as hard as I could to keep balance and cross to the other side before something disastrous could happen. But once I made it over, Maria and I both looked to Kishi, who was watching as stones from higher up the mountain began to roll down at high speed. Come on, Kishi, you don't have time to waste. I'm on it. Kishi sprinted across the bridge with amazing speed, but just as she made it halfway across, a plank of wood underneath her feet cracked and her leg got stuck. God fucking damn it. She tried to pull herself up, but with her injured arm, it was proving more difficult than she thought. Do you need help, Kishi? I took a step toward the bridge, but she held out her hand as if to stop me. I, I got it. She carefully lifted herself out of the hole and got back onto her feet. There were a few cuts on her leg, but nevertheless, she ran toward the edge of the bridge. Of course, as fate would have it, she wouldn't get an easy ride to the end. As a hefty boulder barreled down the mountain and crashed into the bridge, splitting it in two. And of course, collapsing the whole thing in a matter of seconds. Shit! Kishi stumbled and lost her balance as the bridge started to unwind and collapse. She could barely get enough strength to make one final leap to try and grab the ledge. Kishi! Without thinking, I'd leapt toward the edge of the bridge, reaching out a hand to grab Kishi just as I was about to fall down the mountain. I felt her hand in mine, her injured arm just barely grasping and digging into my skin for dear life. Don't worry, I've got you. Granted, I did have her hand, but I was also leaning halfway over a cliff, a cliff perched right over some jagged stones. So if I couldn't pull her back up, then we were both going to meet a pretty damn painful end. Maria, mind giving me a hand? Yeah, don't worry, I got you. Maria grabbed a hold of me, and with her help, we were able to pull Kishi back onto the mountain. Phew, talk about a close one, huh? Belle really isn't pulling any punches and making things difficult. Kishi? Huh? Oh, I'm fine, I just... She was hiding away her face, frantically wiping at her eyes. Hey, you alright? I mean... I'd get it if you were if you got overwhelmed by everything that happened. No, I'm fine. I just got something caught in my eyes is all. Ah, yes, the typical something in my eyes excuse. It's all right, Kishi. 
I think we'd all freak out a little if I thought we were if we thought we were going to fall to our death. Because she still refused to turn to us until she's sufficiently wiped what I imagine with tears from her face. I'm fine. Like I said, I just got some gravel or dust in my eye. Sure. Don't tease me. We're nearly at the top, right? That seems to be the case. Hopefully there's an easy way back down. Only one way to find out. Let's make our way to the top. Maria wasted no time rushing up the final parts of the trail toward the summit. But I stayed behind to see how Kishi was doing. Are you sure you're alright? I said I'm fine, okay? She snapped back suddenly with a huff. I just had a moment, alright? I can handle this. I'm not just gonna collapse, alright? Nothing to worry yourself over. If you say so. Just as quickly she snapped at me, she seemed to soften her gaze and shake her head in frustration. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you like that. I just got a little overwhelmed, that's all. No, I get it. I think if I were in your shoes, I'd probably have been overwhelmed too. I'd probably be sobbing like a baby if I nearly died from a fall. Well, I guess we're lucky it wasn't you then, huh? Devon? Yeah, I guess we were lucky it wasn't me. Hey, what's taking you two so long? The view up here is awesome. Well, best not to keep Maria waiting. Let's see what's at the top. I silently walked with Kishi toward the summit. But again, I started to feel that immense dread looming around my heart again. Except this time it felt oppressive, as though I knew this was about to be the worst part. The climax of all those horrible feelings. I was already shivering, and for once it wasn't because of the cold. It was just terror. Nevertheless, we made it to the top of the mountain, and we could see everything around us. Instinctively, I was looking around at the landscape. I saw the desert in the far distance and how it led to the swamp, how the swamp led to here. And if you went far enough, it would lead back to the tundra. Like a loop. A loop. I swallowed as if the word loop itself was causing me intense dread. A loop of four. Huh? You say something, Devon? Nothing. Let's just check out the ch tent. Yeah, but it should be easy enough, right? Maria, Kishi and I walked over toward the tent. It looked to be the same as all the other tents, but there was one small difference. Just on the screen by the tent. Number of votes needed? Four. It needs four votes? I clutched my chest as a painful burning sensation started to ebb from it. But, but that shouldn't be possible. This, this just can't be right. It was always getting in like this, wasn't it? After we let Laura have the first tent and let her go into it, this is how it was always going to end up. But, but that's not fair. How the hell are we supposed to know to bring Laura with us? I mean, it was just a stroke of chance that the three of us made it up this far, right? This just isn't fair. Belle told us. Huh? Right before we played the game. So what happens if you get to stay in one of the tents? Do you just get sent over to the lounge or does something else happen? You'll stay there for a while. After all, you'll still be able to communicate with the others. They won't be able to vote anymore. That seems a little too simple. What's the catch here? I'm sure you figure it out quickly, but that's really all you need to know. I'm sure if you all make the grand journey together, everything will be fine. Then we were supposed to go as a group. It's like you said earlier, Kishi. Bell designed this game to test how far we'd be willing to go together. Every obstacle, every challenge, every irritant was to make us want to huddle up into a tent. If even one of us fell for that temptation, then someone was going to die. I walked towards the edge of the summit and looked at each of the various landscapes. It was like a cycle going from one to four. We just didn't start at one, we started at three. You're right. Kishi walked over beside the tent and pointed to a sign that had a button on it. It read, Welcome to the summit. This game will end if you press this button. Please note that if you're not in a tent four minutes after the button is pressed, you will die as the world crumbles around you. The game will also end automatically ten minutes after all eligible participants have entered their tents. I hope you've enjoyed your lovely hike. Your gracious, lovely, beautiful and fortunate host, Belle. Maria kicked the sign over in frustration. Bull fucking shit, this ain't fair. Then I guess the idea was that we all went up together. We'd all get a tent. Once everyone walked back to their tents, whoever was on the mountain would activate the button and then go into the tent. And then we'd all survive. You must feel so happy about this, huh? Huh? What do you... Maria had walked up to Kishi and grabbed her by a tank top. Was this your plan? Did you figure all this out earlier and then just kept quiet? What? No, I didn't do anything like that. I was just in the dark about... I was just in... In the dark as you were about how all this would end. But you had a feeling. You had a feeling it would be important to get a tent for sure, right? That's why you wanted the second tent, wasn't it? Maria, what are you doing? If you're going to get mad at anyone, you can get mad at me. I'm the one who gave up the second tent to Kishi. I'm the one who had bad feelings about all this and didn't speak up about it. That's... 
And even if that's true, you're blameless in all this. Kishi had a bad feeling about this too, I bet. She's just playing coy, wants to look all innocent, so she'd be able to have a nice long chat with you once I'm gone. What, what are you even implying? Kishi didn't get a lot of chances to speak as Maria pushed her closer toward the edge of the mountain. Maria was holding her by the scruff of the shirt. If she let go, Kishi would no doubt fall off the mountain to her death. Maria, stop. I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm not planning anything. I... I... Kishi looked like she was trying hard to swallow down the panic that was starting to rise from being dangled over a cliff. Confess, this is what you were going to do, right? You were going to indoctrinate them, weren't you? Once I was gone, you could tell them just about anything you wanted. No, no, I wasn't. I don't have any plans like that at all. Maria, what are you talking about? Just listen, she'll confess it soon enough. You're dangling her off the edge of a cliff. Fear is a great motivator, I'll have you know. I don't know what you're trying to get me to confess to. Yes, you do. You want to pull Devon and Laura into the digits of Eden. That's what you want, isn't it? To get every member that you can get. That's not... Maria let go of Kishi just for just a split second, letting her feel a moment of freefall before grabbing her again. Pick your next words carefully. And honestly. There was a flash of genuine panic across Kishi's face. Just, But just as quickly, she took a deep breath and her face hardened. Then... Then do it. Do you think I'm like the others? That I'd take any opportunity to brainwash everyone else into this damn cult? You think that I'd willingly try and pull in more people? I do, I mean, wouldn't you? Isn't that what your grandma wants you to do? I don't give a shit about the digits of Eden. You know what the truth? I hate it. I want out of it. But she won't let me leave. She won't let me out until I do this one damn thing for her. I give you my word, I don't want any of them involved in the digits of Eden. And if you don't trust me, then just drop me. Maria glared into Kishi's eyes as if searching for an ounce of deception. When Kishi didn't back down, she stared back, as if challenging, challenging Maria to drop her. Almost as if she was certain that she knew her words were the truth, even if Maria didn't like them. Maria's eyes softened. In fact, she seemed to avert her gaze from Kishi as, she were as if she were ashamed and slowly pulled her back to safety. She turned her head away and tried not to look at Kishi. Kishi, on the other hand, was shaking. I couldn't tell if she was shaking with fury, relief or shock, but either way, she took a deep breath and paced around to calm herself down again. I could only awkwardly look between the two of them, hoping that the ordeal wouldn't cause any more fights. So are you two good? Well, I was dangled within an inch of my life off a mountain, but sure, you could say I'm good. I'm sorry. It's fine. I get why you did it, and I don't blame you. But did you have to be so dramatic about it? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide how this all ends. What do you mean by that? Well, you have to be the person that activates the final portion of the game, pressing the button while Devon and I get back to our tents. If you really want to be a dick, you could just press it now and have all three of us die. But I don't think you'd do that. Of course not, I wouldn't just kill you all out of spite. You literally just held Kishi over a cliff. But that was... Don't hold it against, him or against Maria too much, she's just looking out for you in her own way. I understand her, again. I just wish she didn't make the whole thing scary. Anyway. Can we trust you to end this off in a good way? I promise to keep Laura and Devon safe as best as I can anyway. You better. You can trust me, I'm on your side here. Maria didn't respond and simply walked over toward the tent and leaned against it. She obviously was still pissed off about everything, but she nevertheless seemed to accept defeat without any ill will towards me or Kishi. Or at least not much towards me. Guess we should go then. Yeah, just let me say goodbye one last time, okay? Sure, I'll look around for a way back down the mountain. Kishi walked off and I approached Maria who gave me a quick glance before turning away. There wasn't much ang there wasn't much anger as much as there was frustration and shame laced across her face. Hey. Hey. Sorry that things turned out this way. Nothing you got to apologize for. It's not like you knew for certain that I was that this is how things were going to end up. Just bellowing her shitty tricks, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's one way to put it. There's nothing else to say. You don't have to try and cheer me up. I f if I failed here, well, that just means I have to give it another go next time. Yeah, I figured you'd say something like that. You're not the type of person that gives up easily, huh? You bet even death won't be able to stop me. Yeah, that sounds about right. You seem to be in good spirits despite everything, though. Honestly, I figured you'd be a bit more depressed about everything. Or maybe just happy to survive all this. Or maybe normally I would be, but something about this just feels so familiar, expected. There's not quite as much shock to it as there was last time. And there's also a bit of, like, relief, or maybe peace. Yeah, peace feels like the right word. Like an odd sense of calm. You're sounding a lot more like some kind of spiritualist or something. 
Well, if there's anything I have ample of, it's spirit. Not much of muscle or wit, but plenty of spirit. And jokes. Able to crack a fuse like it, like it's nothing, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Didn't want your last moments to be ones where you were just frowning, you know? Oh, Devon, you're sweet. Wish you would have said all this stuff before I ended up stranded on top of a mountain, though. Oh, well, hindsight is 2020. Guess you're right. Just one last thing, though. I don't want to hold you up long. Just be careful around Kishi, alright? Because you're trying to indoctrinate me or whatever you mentioned before? Honestly, I'm not even sure about that anymore. I figured that anyone in the Digits of Eden would be willing to pull in people without a second thought. But that's obviously not the case. I don't think that she means to do anything bad to you. Maybe that's just me being cautious. Maybe Kishi really does have good intentions, but maybe she really does want to get out of that stupid cult. But a little caution never hurt anyone. I'll keep that in mind. Great, well, then I guess I've got nothing more to say. I'm just trying to enjoy the view up here as best I can before the world crumbles. It's a nice view at least. Well, take care then, Maria. She gave me the thumbs up and then began to hum to herself as I left. After a few minutes of searching, Kishi and I were able to find a route that led off the mountain. My thoughts were muddled, to say the least. Not because of what had happened. No, I understood full well the situation. But that was the issue. Everything made sense, everything felt familiar, and the more I thought about it, the more these blended thoughts and memories began to surface up. And I couldn't make sense of it. Well, that's not true either. I could make sense of it. What I couldn't understand was... What was I going to do with all this information? Kishi was here. I guess now is as good a time as any to ask her about it. Maybe she'd be able to explain it. We'd already made it back toward the swamp, or at least the latter part of it. And it would be good to break the silence. Hey, Kishi. Hmm? Have you ever felt some weird sense of deja vu? Kishi looked at me with eyebrows raised, both surprised and confused. Have you felt like so something like that before? I mean, the whole dread I felt walking up the mountain was one thing. And then there were a few other things. When I caught you off the bridge, it felt like I did that, but I was on the other end. But it's not that... It's not just that there's been like... There's blurry images in my head. Like, things were the same here, but they were different. Different how? Now, for starters, I remember there was a time when I took the second tent, and then you gave the third tent to Maria. And then I think there was a time you gave me a pep talk, and then after that, I felt my head throbbing as I tried to recall the details. There were just things after that, like Maria was there and she helped me, and then there was a desert again? Some kind of a rock thing? I tried my best to focus, but all the images and memories blurred together. No, it was like they were blurring and then became clear, stretching, compressing, changing, each one trying to come into focus and pushing something else out of the way. And it was giving me a headache. Oh, it's no use. Everything just isn't making sense. I kicked a rock in frustration and tried to clear my head. I felt like I'm going crazy. I don't think you're going crazy. I felt like that from time to time, but never with that kind of clarity. Sometimes that kind of thing happens when your emotions are running high, you know? Flashbulb memories and whatnot. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe it'll clear up if I keep going. Possibly. Guess there's no point in fretting about it. Everything about this place is weird. Yeah, that's for sure. Eventually the conversation died down and we made it back to the third tent. My tent. Are you going to be okay making it back to your tent? Should be, I mean, I'd like to thank Bella who gave us those obstacles and threats on the way to the mountain. Going back to it should be much easier, at least I hope so. Well, we didn't have any issues on the way back, so maybe you're right. Kishi nodded and then looked at the path leading back toward the desert. It had elevated over the water. A mark changed since last time. Looks like Belle had mercy on me. She didn't want me to wade through swamp water again. Thank heavens. Anyway, I'll message Maria so she'll know when to end the game. So until then, Kishi flashed me a smile before continuing down the path. As for me, well, I shuffled into the tent watching as the flaps closed and locked behind me. There wasn't much else to do except to wait for Maria to end the game. So I figured I might as well text her and see how she was doing. I pulled out my tablet and began to tap away. Hey Maria, I made it to my tent safe and sound. I hope you're doing okay. I'm doing alright, you know, considering everything that's happened. Not exactly sure how this is going to kill me, but... Well, it's an alright view at least. And hey, things could be worse. I could have like died in a really painful way or something. You're brave, you know. To be able to face death down the way you are. It's not really that brave, really. I've known braver people in my life that threw away their life in order to do what they thought was right. Compared to them, I'm not all that brave, but I try to be. Anyway, don't worry too much about me. Focus on making it to the end yourself. I'm not giving up, don't worry. That's all I needed to hear. Or read? You get the point. Yeah, I get it. 
Well, I hope you find peace wherever you end up going. Me too, Devin. Me too. Anyway, see ya. It was such a curt and short conversation, you wouldn't expect that I was talking with someone about to die on a mountain. But maybe that's just how she was. Always smiling in the face of impending doom and danger, endlessly optimistic. I didn't even know her for that long, but I felt as though I knew her for a lifetime. Perhaps this place is getting to me again. Eventually the minutes passed and I considered texting Kishi to see how far she was getting to her tent. But then... The tent began to shake violently, as if there was a terrible earthquake outside. All the materials jolted and shook and it felt as though I was in, inside the drum of a dryer. I tumbled and tossed around into the world. It felt like an unsteady blur until finally the world was silent and, and still. Did she kill Kishi anyway? I huffed as I carefully untangled myself from the mess that had been made inside the tent and looked toward the opening in the tent, which flapped weakly. The game must have ended, so I was meant to leave, right? I crawled out of the tent and... I was in a hallway. I looked around and saw that there were the other three tents here as well. Oh, she did make it, and slowly Kishi and Laura crawled out of theirs as well. Are we done? I guess we are. Were you all shaken up before being allowed to leave? Yeah, it didn't get much of... Didn't get much time to get comfortable before I was tossed around like dirty laundry. Did someone say Bell? No? Oh, I could have sworn that... Well, never mind that. Congratulations each of you for completing your journey through the game. Hopefully you all feel nice and refreshed. Wouldn't exactly call a deadly hike through the wilds refreshing, especially considering all the obstacles you put in our way. Oh, but it's not a fun hike if there aren't challenges, you know? They didn't make it particularly fun either. The only person that was really enjoying them was Maria, sort of. Speaking of which, where is Maria? I was told that she wasn't going to make it, but even so. I oh, you want to see the evidence of your fellow competitor's body? Oh, I was just a little curious. You really want the nitty gritty details of all that? Yes? Wow, who would have imagined sweet Laura being the morbidly curious one of the group? Well, since you asked, I suppose I can show you the details. Belle snapped her fingers and pointed behind us. When we turned, we saw Maria's corpse curled up into a ball on the ground. The bruises, cuts, and unnatural body positions, it was obvious that she'd somehow been crushed to death. There you have it, Maria's earth-shattering corpse. It's like she got crushed by stones. Well, duh, she was on a mountain during an earthquake. Surely something bad was going to happen to her. So are you satisfied now? I'm not sure if satisfied is the word I'd use to describe this. And I went through all the trouble of bringing her here. Oh well, not everyone appreciates my hard work. Belle clapped her hands once again and the body fizzed into a dark blue mist. That reminds me, let me take care of those nasty injuries for you. Belle blew a kiss in our direction and the light blue haze enveloped our injuries and just like before, mended them all back to normal. Now you should be all roaring and ready to go. Don't dally too long, the other groups are no doubt excited to see you again. Ta-ta! And just like that, Belle vanished in a cloud of sparkling blue mist. Well, I guess that's that then. Seems to be the case. Nothing more we can do than but press onward. Sad that Maria had to die that way, but she shrugged and started walking down the hall. Eventually it would have happened. We all die here sooner or later. Laura's shoulders sagged as she let out a heavy sigh. She was so encouraging. Even when the worst was happening, she was always trying to uplift us. It's going to be tougher without her. Well, think of it this way, Laura. Just because Maria's gone doesn't mean that we have to toss out that uplifting spirit. We can just carry it with us. After all, it's not like you're going to give up because Maria's dead, right? I guess you're right. Yeah, you're strong. I'm sure that you can push yourself forward one way or another. When you put it that way, it does make it a little easier to keep going. That's the spirit, Laura. Since when did you become such a cheerleader? It wasn't that long ago you were in a sorry state just like me. No offense. Uh, I don't know. When did I become so hardened? I didn't even, f didn't even feel unnatural, it just felt strange. Maybe I'm just getting hardened by the experience. I understand, I think I'm getting a bit tougher about this too. All we have to do is keep going until the end. Yeah. After we entered into the lounge, we looked around to see who else had survived. See, I told you they were right behind me. Kishi had already entered the lounge, so she was chatting with the other survivors as Laura and I entered. So that's true, you weren't pulling my leg. Why would I pull your leg about who survived? It would have made for a fun surprise, you know? I think that Devin and Laura survived. Only to see Maria as the sole survivor alongside you. The math wouldn't work out if that were the case. True, but you know, maybe then I'd be shocked for a few seconds. Then Devin or Laura could pop out from the door and be like a twist or in a thriller movie. You know, I'm not going to try and create dramatic tension for the fun of it. You should try it, I assure you, it's the thrill in and of itself. So Teresa and Elizabeth survived their games. Those two played in the first game room along with Alphonse and Everett. And I don't see either of them. 
so they must have died from that game. But I didn't just spot their absence, I saw another familiar pair of loun pair lounging around by the couches. <laughs> Aha! I see that we have the finalists from the final game. Hmm. Yep, there was Richard and Philip, alright. Somehow still as chipper as ever. Or at least Philip was. Yeah, we made it. I had to get through some monstrous hike like you wouldn't believe. How was that so? Guess I lucked out. There's no way I'd be able to do any game with serious hiking involved. With the amount of traveling you do, I figured you'd like hiking. Maybe in my younger days, but my legs aren't what they used to be. What kind of game did you two have to go through? Drinking trivia. Drinking what? It's just a trivia game, really, but each time you got a question wrong, you had to take a shot of this poisonous drink. Which, you know, would screw with your head. And if you didn't get enough questions right by the end of the game, you'd end up dead. Of course, being as well learned as me, it wasn't hard for me to cruise through such a game. As to me, I don't know, I just answered the questions I was sure about. Zeph had a bit of trouble here and there, but he got through it toward the end. So Zeph survived then? Where is he then? Yeah, he just went to take a breather in the bathroom. William was the only one who didn't make it through. Poor lad was eager, but his mind wasn't in the right place. Well, he is an idiot. Yeah, that sounds about right. Trivia doesn't really seem like a game that William would be all that good at. You're talking about me when I'm not even here? Speak of the devil. Actually, we were talking about William. And a handsome as hell devil at that. You seem to be in high spirits? Well, I survived my game and I gotta show that cocky punk what for in the last game. And to top it all off, my lovely girlfriend survived too. What's not to be happy about? Careful now. Pride comes before the fall. Nah, I'm used to falling. Comes with the sport. Anyway, we're all here now and that's what matters, right? Time to get sorted out in our new groups, right? Yep. We just finished our game. We're already getting into a new one. Well, from our perspective, we've been waiting for quite a bit for all of you to finish up your game. Not only that, but consider that your group had ample time to rest before even starting your game. Even so, a little break would be nice. And if you want rest, you can join whatever group's going through the second door. Otherwise, there's no point delaying the inevitable. Yeah, I guess you're right. Still would have been nice to decompress and see how everyone else was doing. Our foreigns and Maria died, so their pair is gone. But how are Elizabeth and Teresa holding up? Teresa looks about as jolly as she usually is. And Elizabeth, well, I'm not really sure. She looks a little pain, but otherwise she's as stern and cool, cool, cool edited as usual. But nevertheless, the game had to continue. So everyone moved over toward the game doors once again. Alright everyone, almost at an end here. Only eight of us left, so it should be easier splitting up into pairs now. Surprisingly, there are still two pairs intact at this point. Zeph and I, and Philip and Richard. You're right, it is somewhat of a surprise to see that this old fool has made it as far as he has. A pleasant surprise, right? More like a disappointing one. Philip simply shrugged and flashed a shit-eating grin Elizabeth's way. Ugh. I bring that up since I figured it'd be easy for Zeph and I to pair up with Philip and Richard. That would put me, Teresa, Laura and Devon in a group together. Seems like a simple solution if you ask me. Let's everyone think about it. Fine by me. It means I don't have to worry about being paired up with Philip. While I'm a little hurt by Elizabeth's comment, I think I'm okay with this arrangement. Might give us a good chance to catch up, Kishi. Or maybe you and Richard. Been a while since you two have seen one another after all. They know each other? Sounds good to me. I'm okay with it. I don't really have a preference, I'll just do whatever works best for the group. Hmm. Therese looked between Laura and I. Oh yes, I think this would be a very fun grouping. Why do I have a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach? Because Teresa's evil? Oh, you don't need to worry, Laura. I wouldn't do anything cruel to you. My skin began to crawl as I looked at Teresa. She had the eyes of a predator sizing up her prey. And honestly, while I'm certain that I might be able to handle whatever she was going to throw at me, I'd rather not deal with it right now. I hate to be the person throwing a wrench into the groupings, but can I be in a group that doesn't have Teresa? There was a brief pause before Teresa clicked her tongue in frustration. What's wrong? You scared of me or something? I just get a bad feeling whenever I look at you. You're like, like you're scheming something. Me? Scheme? Don't be ridiculous. I wouldn't do anything like that. I just try and win, same as anyone else. Yeah, that wicked smell of hers is setting me on edge. Either way, I'd just rather not deal with you right now. Well, let's not make things too much of a hassle. I'll swap with you, Devin. That way the youngsters can still stay together. Are you really trying to imply that we're old? <laughs> well, I mean. Philip adjusted his glasses, seemingly surprised by the evil glares he was getting now. Not old, experienced. I mean, Elizabeth and I are really the oldest ones here. And that of everyone else here, we are technically the oldest out of those alive. At least, I'm assuming that you two are early 40s? Teresa and Laura both sent death glares at Philip, who tugged at his collar nervously. <laughs> Just a joke, of course. I know that you young ladies are in the prime of your youth, no doubt. Mid-30s? 
It's like watching a man dig his own grave using an excavator. You know, I think we're going to have a very fun conversation, Philip. It's a wonder you outlived your wife with that careless tongue of yours. Teresa, Laura and Elizabeth began to approach Philip menacingly. Hey, wait, I don't like where this is going. Richard, don't leave your dear old dad to suffer like this. Should we get going? Yeah, I don't think I want to hear what happens to him. Richard? The four of us walked into the waiting room. Wait, please, have mercy. All we heard were the pain cries of an old man before the doors closed behind us. And with that, we're going to wrap this one up here because we're out of time for today. The hike is done once again. Maria is gone and the rest of us survived. Is this what we played Bandit King last time? I'm curious to see what game we play this time. Because we've got a totally different uh, team here this time. So, and I wonder who's going to be going to... I suppose this will be Kishi's ending would be my guess that we're working toward now because we've had Kishi most of the way. And, you know, we haven't really had Philip or Zeph much this time, so... And obviously Devin, we've got Devin's ending already, so I'd say it's Kishi's ending, but we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, Bruce, and I'll see you in the next one.